He came over to my warehouse, we put the dealer plates on it, and I can tell you, both of us were so excited and we were so surprised about the power of that car that, that I immediately told him, man, I think this is the fastest Diablo I ever, I ever drove. It was 1993 when Lamborghini showed up the SE30 Diablo, which is, in my opinion, the most iconic and the most amazing Diablo you can buy. There was a German guy near our house in Frankfurt, and he ordered the SE30 at that time. It was number 56, and he ordered it in a special color, which was a dark, dark viola, dark purple, called Dunkelblau, which is an, normally a blue name. I really don't know why they named that color that way, but it's a, it's a dark purple. And he ordered that car with a cray interior, cray leather, and as I said, in a special order. The reason why he ordered in that color is it was a Porsche color. So it was a one-of-one -one car. Until today, I think there were no, was no Lamborghini ever painted in that color again. He had a 964 Carrera in the same color next to it. At that time, this was the reason why he ordered that car in this color. After Lamborghini showed up the Yota kit some month later, he had the idea, hey, I need a Yota kit for that car. I have a special color, it's a very special car, so I need that kit. He didn't get it. He was one of the guys who asked for it and didn't get one kit. And there was another guy who called Mr. Becker. And he had the same idea and he didn't get it as well. At that time, when Lamborghini showed up the Yota kit, a dealership in Germany which called Lamborghini Hoeker, a very experienced guy in kind of service, and was also a dealership for new cars, had the idea or was in some conversation with the factory about a turbo engine in the Diablo. At that time, you could buy the XJ220, you could buy the EB110, both turbocharged cars. They had the idea to develop something like that. Mr. Hoeker was a very experienced guy in case of turbocharged engines and he told them or he said, let's develop a supercharged engine. It's better for that engine. It, he thinks it works better with the V12. Mr. Ulmbrock, who was the first owner of that purple car, and Mr. Becker, they were directly into it when he told them the idea. For sure, at that time, Lamborghini wasn't the richest company and they had to pay for it. Mr. Ulmbrock told our dad at that time he paid about 200,000 German mark just for the development, except his car, <laughs> which was about 450,000 mark at that time for a SE30. It was in the year 1995, 1996, it took about 10 months for the development for Mr. Hoeker and his employees to create something very special. The development included a supercharger, like a new air intakes from a build out of carbon fiber, new ECU software, and they changed the brakes, the ATE brakes from the stock SE30 to the McLaren F1 Brembo brakes, which was in my opinion the best solution they could make. After the first run on the dyno, the, it came out that the engine had about 750 horsepower. But because of that huge power, the head gaskets blowed off and they decided let's reduce the power a little bit that the engine works properly. At the end of the day, the outcome was 634 horsepower and until today, the engine runs perfectly. After they were sure that the engine were or both of the, those cars were running in a proper way. There was the idea to producing that development in series, but at that time, as many times before, the fact that we were sold again, and the idea of that supercharged car got a little bit unimportant for the factory. So after about 12 years, Mr. Unbrock owned that car in, in the year 2006. He ordered a 612 Scaglietti at a Ferrari dealership in Frankfurt, and he gave his car as a trade-in. I think he was kind of finished with that car, he had it for 12 years and he wanted something new. All over that time, our dad was a friend of Mr. Unbrock and he knew that car since the first day. My dad had a Yota at that time and they were friends, they came out from the same city, they started together through some Lamborghini m m meetings and uh, so they knew each other quite well. The dealership in Frankfurt was a friend of my dad as well and he called my dad and he knew, okay, he's a Lambo guy, I'm a Ferrari dealer, totally use useless car for me. He called my dad and said, hey Rainer, I got that trade-in, it's a SE30, it's a dark purple one, kind of something special, do you want to buy that car from me because I cannot sell it as a Ferrari dealer. My dad directly sit in the car, drove over to, drove over to him and saw the car and yeah, he directly decided I need that car. 
after he sold his Yota in 2003, which was a big fold, he needed something new. So he decided to buy that car. Directly, our dad told us, hey guys, we get a new Lamborghini, be excited of it. It's something very special. And what I can tell you today is we had a lot of fun with that car. We, had a, we, we, we have a lot of memories with that car. It was amazingly fast. So it was, you cannot imagine that a Diablo is that fast as it is. Even in 2007, I had my first Lamborghini owners meeting in Swiss with that car. I was a co-driver of my dad, for sure the best co-driver he can has at that time. We went over to St. Moritz for that members meeting from Italy, Swiss, Austria and Germany. There were about 150 to 180 cars and it was an amazing meeting, some very nice people and for sure there were amazing cars. Later in 2012 or 2011 or 12, our dad sold that car to a collection to a friend of him and he resold it to another collection and all the time we knew where the car is. The car never left Europe as any other cars we know about, so I was in contact with the owners all the time, or even my brother or my dad. I had the opportunity to buy a red SE30 as, as I'm a big fan of the SE30 and I said, okay, I have the opportunity of that car for a reasonable price and I bought that car and then I saw the dark purple car again in the, in the corner of that garage. And I spoke to the current owner and he told me, yeah, that's my dream car. I had a lot of SE30s, I rebuilt it. that one you buy now from me and this is the car I needed all of my life. I never want to resell it. It's just beautiful. By the way, he never drove it. <laughs> he, he, he used to drive it for one time and the, the, the car was running out of fuel after 200 meters and that's it. That was the one drive he had in that car. He told me, by the way, he's a very passionate Lamborghini guy, that he loves it to open his garage open the car cover and just see the car in that amazing color. As I said, for all of the time, I was in contact with him and I shared the new status of his old car uh, that I want to repaint it and so on. When I had the opportunity to buy back our dad's Yota, I directly told him about it because he's a Yota fan as I am. I directly mentioned, hey man, I will fly over, I will see the car, I maybe have the opportunity to buy it. He was maybe excited as I was, but he 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 wished me luck and he's just he was so friendly and he directly directly texted me, hey, what is the status about the Yota? You will get it. You need to, you need to show me the car when you get it and like that. I would say like four months later, after I bought the Yota and I still owned the red one. He called me and asked me, Moritz, do you want to buy the supercharged one? You got the Yota back from your dad. I think you need that other one as well. And I was surprised because he told me just a short time before, he never wants to resell it. And I asked him, what is the reason for it that you want to sell it now? He said, Let me, let's speak about it later. There is a reason, but I don't want to speak about it now. There is a deal, I want to close that deal. And if it's closed, I will tell you about it. So I directly decided, okay, let me think about it. Give me an hour. I called my brother Alex and I said, man, we have the opportunity to buy that car back. We directly decided to offer a price. We had the same feeling about the price. I called him and I said, hey, this is my offer. What do you think about it? And he agreed directly. He said, that's fair enough. Let's do it. So we bought that car back. I was very excited. I took my trailer on the car, started with my girlfriend to Austria to pick it up. I think it was a, it was a Sunday. We started early in the morning and when I saw the car came outside of the garage, it was a feeling, I would not compare it to the, to the Yota, but it was something very special as well because that was the first car I, I joined my dad for a Lamborghini meeting. It was a car, I was in an age, I had me many memories I can remember and I was very excited to drive it because I, had a, I heard a lot of the power of that car, but I never drove that car by myself. So we directly put it on the trailer. We had a nice day in Austria with that guy and we went back. Next day, Monday morning, I called my brother. So when we will meet, let's put the, the dealer blades on the car and let's make a test drive. He came over to my warehouse. We put the dealer blades on it and I can tell you, both of us were so excited and we were so surprised about the power of that car that I immediately told him, man, I think this is the fastest Diablo I ever drove. Some weeks later, I got an invitation from the St. Moritz Car Week and I decided with my girlfriend, let's take the supercharged car and let's go there. 
let's celebrate that week there with that with this car because that was the first place of the Lamborghini meeting I had with my dad and I want to show my girlfriend where all started with the meetings. <laughs> so we took the car again on the trailer, started to St. Moritz and we had an amazing week there. We had some very nice drives with some Ferrari guys, Lamborghini guys, there were some old Tessarossas, Countach as well. It was just, just a pretty amazing week. The event at that time called Super Stick Shift and the Super Stick Shift is something uh, you can bring a car which is older than 1995, must be two seats and a rear wheel drive and that's it. And for sure it must be a manual car because of the Super Stick Shift. And we had an amazing drive to Italy down to uh, Lago di Garda and I can tell you it was about 500 kilometers, 600 kilometers per day and that car is very comfortable. Compared to Yota, which is the right way to compare it to Yota because that was the idea to build that car. The immediately throttle response of Yota, the very, very aggressive way the car works, is different to that supercharged car. The supercharged car is more like a freight train and it pushes you all the way until you end up at 360, 365 kilometers per hour and it never stops until that. So it's an amazing feeling, but in the lower RPMs, it drives like a normal Diablo. You have the power steering wheel not as in the first series, it's very comfortable, you have the carbon fiber seats, you have, in my opinion, as tall as I am, you have a huge space in the SE30, much more than in the first series and in any VT. You can drive that car really for about 500 to 800 kilometers per day. So there were many ways to take your own decision which car is perfect for you. We have the SE30, we have the Diablo GT, we have a VT, we have a first series. There are so many differences between these cars that I think everybody choose the car which he liked the most. I start most of my days browsing Auto Tempest for my next bad decision of a car, but did you know that supporting Auto Tempest can also help support all the great content that they support in the automotive YouTube world? I know that you've probably enjoyed a lot of videos that they supported and a lot of channels that they've been sponsoring for years, perhaps without even knowing it. So check them out now at the link in the description below. It is the most powerful way to shop for your next car because you'll see all the listings showing up in one search and you can search by any criteria that you want, but it also helps make automotive YouTube a much better place. So check them out now, autotempest.com, all the cars, one search.